Well, this next step is a fairly simple step, but I want to go over some ground rules, particularly for you folks that have bought DVDs from us before on other boats because it's going to be a little bit different. <clears throat> we get uh, questions often, and this falls into the category of don't believe everything you read, uh, either on the internet or otherwise. Um, and it's called a saturation code, or a base code, or any number of things that people call it. And what it amounts to is rolling on <clears throat> excuse me, a layer of, of epoxy into the wood before you go ahead and put fiberglass on. Now, for those of you who have purchased from us before, especially the canoes, you know that we didn't do that. And, and, and I gave you the reason we don't do that, because we're using six ounce cloth, and it really has to do with the viscosity of the resin and whether or not you can push the resin through the cloth, saturate the cloth and the wood at the same time. This boat and the peapod and the 14 foot um, Whitehall, we're using 10 ounce glass. Now, it, there's going to be a number of you out there who have done fiberglassing before who say that you can do it without on 10 ounce glass. I typically don't. <clears throat> if it's 10 ounce glass, that's a lot of glass to work the epoxy through and get it to stick to the hull and saturate the wood at the same time. Because the problem is, is as the epoxy starts to go through the fiberglass, the wood starts to suck it up. And what you don't want to do is starve the joint between the fiberglass and the wood. Because remember, um, epoxy is a glue. So you don't want to starve that joint. You want there to be plenty there. Okay, so um, we're going to roll this over. But understand that if you're going to do this, and, and again, if you're using 10 ounce cloth, which for this boat I highly recommend, um, you need to be at a point now where you're not going to be sanding it anymore because once you roll on the base coat or the, or the saturation coat, last thing in the world you want to do is take sandpaper to it because what you're going to be doing effectively is darkening the wood. And if you take sandpaper to it after that, you're going to start to change the shades and then if you put your, you know, for all you folks that are going to be doing bright work and you're not going to be painting your boat, you will see the differences in shades as you go along. So, you know, once we roll this on, that's it. it it's, uh, you, you need to leave the boat alone. It's time to put the fiberglass cloth on. So let's talk about a couple of things you should make sure you have done to this point. You should have gone through the entire hull and sanded it with a minimum 120, if not even, you know, 220 to get it nice and smooth. <clears throat> Remember, you are working with quarter inch strips, so, you know, be careful. <laughs> Don't be sanding through the boat. Um, you know, you're just looking to take enough off to keep the rough off. If you got to take more than that off, then you started out with bad strips. All right, so if all your strips were uniform when you started, you should just be taking little whispers off here and there. Okay, so down here at the bedding of the skeg, or the dead wood, we have sanded this so that it meets that bedded piece perfectly. So that when I go to start layering this thing and I go from one to the other, it will be perfect transition. Okay, so I'm gonna go from the bedding and the skeg right up. And again, that should already be done. <clears throat> Pretty much at this point, all of the sanding should be done. All right, I've already sanded down here on the sides, our fillets, and I've smoothed them all out so I have a nice rounded transition, uh, uh, which is called a fillet. When you have a, a corner and you do a rounded transition, that's called a fillet. Uh, and my fillets are nice and smooth going down either side of that. Um, let's go down the other end of the boat. <clears throat> we'll talk about the stem piece. Okay, so the outer stem, uh, we just put that on, right? And I have removed the screws at this point. I have sanded down the sides so that it's nice and clean. And now I'm going to go ahead and, and do the roll. But before I do that, again, I've, I've flattened this area out so that I got a good transition going from here to here. Now it doesn't have to be perfect if any, you know, because you know, once we put the fiberglass on, there's a little bit of thickness to that, a little bit of thickness to the epoxy. So it's gonna change a little bit, but you want it close. So let's say this comes a 16th of an inch high. It's not really a problem because when we bring this one down and we make it meet, we just do a little feathering, a little sanding to the two of them the same. And then the next one goes right over the two of them and it just disappears forever. All right, there is going to be that little <clears throat> space underneath here that we're going to fill with epoxy and, and, and wood flour and make a fillet there. So that'll disappear. Uh, we've sanded everything down so we won't be uh, touching that again. Uh, particularly for you people doing bright work, you know, spend a little time here. Remember, not every sander you have plugs in. Right? You can use your hands. 
you can, you know, just take a piece of 120 and your thumb and, and get in there and do a decent job. Trust me when I tell you that, you know, an hour or two spent now will make a big difference because you're going to be looking at this for a very long time. So take the hour or two, relax, enjoy the journey. It's not about just getting a boat. If you just want to get a boat, go buy a boat. This is a journey to make a boat. All right, so I'm going to mix up some epoxy. Uh, nothing really special about it. It's just uh, the regular epoxy that we use, the low viscosity, uh, no fillers of any kind. And you're going to need <coughs> an ultra high density roller. Uh, they don't sell them everywhere, but you can find them. If you bought a, a kit from us, either an epoxy kit or a full kit or an essentials kit, you likely got some of these when we sent you the epoxy. Um, these will do, uh, you don't want to use a nappy roller, a loose roller, or anything like that, because that'll create bubbles all over the boat, and that, that's, you know, then you'll have to sand it, you won't have any choice, and then you probably will be painting the boat. So you want to use the ultra high density roller. Also, you'll notice down here, I put some blue tape on here, um, and that's because I don't want to sand the top of this anymore. I'm not overly worried about the stem, because uh, I can take a little bit of sandpaper to that and likely will take sandpaper to it because we'll be rounding it over before all said and done. But I don't want to mess with this anymore at all because I want to start layering on top of this. And so I need to keep it nice and flat and I don't want to mess with it because it's at the right height, it's at the right width. And so I got a little bit of tape over there so that you know after I'm done rolling it on, I'll pull the tape off and let everything dry and set. Also, you probably noticed that I took the jig off the back end. <clears throat> You can leave it on and do this. I choose not to because it's easy enough to set it up and put it back on later. Um, and I just don't want the hassle of trying to roll around it and not doing a good job because I was worried about that. So I took the jig off and when we put it back on, we'll put it on exactly like we did before. We'll uh, put it on there, pull the string from one end to the other and make sure that we're sending. Okay, so I'm gonna mix up some epoxy now and uh, I'm gonna put it in a paint roller and we're going to uh, roll out this boat.